Hello and welcome to Season 3, Chapter 3 of the Hangar App Podcast. Here we will cover the history of British aviation companies and what happened to them. This episode will tell the story of one of the best known but surprisingly short-lived companies that started up just before World War I. It is, of course, the Sopwith Aviation Company. It was started by Thomas Sopwith, who was known as Tom through his first and middle names, Thomas Octave Murdoch Sopwith. He was a wealthy man in his own right and was a keen sportsman with interest in motor racing, yachting and aviation. He had sheds and hangars at the Oval Banked Motor Racing Circuit and Airfield, known as Brooklands, near Weybridge, in Surrey. This is also where he learned to fly. In June 1912, Thomas Sopwith set up his own aviation company at Brooklands. He built his first aircraft, the Sopwith three-seater. When it was sold to the Admiralty and the Royal Flying Corps, in around December the same year, he moved the company to a disused ice rink in nearby Kingston upon Thames. Brooklands was kept on for test flying. One of the first aircraft made by Sopwith, in collaboration with Saunders of Southampton, later to become Saunders Row, was Sopwith Batboat. This was Britain's first flying boat and was ordered by the Royal Naval Air Service, also known as the Fleet Air Arm. Not unlike the famous Supermarine Spitfire, which was derived from the Schneider Trophy winning Supermarine S6B. Sopwith had success coming from winning the, the race held in 1914 in Monaco, just before the outbreak of the First World War. Their design was the Sopwith Tabloid two-seat floatplane. The winning race variant was called the Sopwith Schneider. It was during the race that the Sopwith Schneider set a new speed record for seaplanes. This was followed by an influx of orders for the Royal Flying Corps, who ordered the fixed undercarriage, and the Royal Naval Air Service. They received the single-seat versions that were used as scouts and bombers. Some were armed with Vickers machine, Lewis machine guns, some fitted to the top wing, firing over the propeller arc, others fired through the propeller with deflector wedges fixed to the propeller blades. During the war, Sopwith aircraft were built in both Britain and France as well as some designs being made by subcontractors around Britain. The designs and aircraft included the famous Sopwith Pup and its successor, the Camel. The Camel was the most successful Allied aircraft during the conflict with its number of kills. It did, however, have a reputation for being hard to handle, but was manoeuvrable in the hands of experienced pilots. It was joked that the hump in the Camel was where the twin Vickers machine guns were housed, above the engine. It was the first British-designed aircraft to have the revolutionary synchronised guns which permitted them to fire through the propeller arc without destroying it. Towards the end of the war, Sopwith took out a lease on a larger factory in Ham, just down the road from their existing factory in Kingston. Here they increased construction rate of the Dolphin, Snipe and Salamander aircraft. However, with the end of hostilities came financial crisis for Sopwith and the company attempted to produce aircraft for the civil market based on their wartime designs. Unfortunately, the wide variety of anti-surplus war machines meant that this was never economically viable. Sopwith even tried to produce motorcycles under license from ABC and set up ABC Motors Limited in 1919, but this also failed. By 1920, the Sopwith Aviation Company was unable to face the financial demands from the Government Excess War Profit Scheme, and this resulted in going into liquidation. The lease on the handworks was, however, sold to Leyland Motors, and other assets were disposed of. Despite this huge failing of one of the co country's largest aircraft manufacturers, Tom Sopwith, Harry Hawker, and chief designer Fred Sigrist went on to form the hugely successful HD Hawker Engineering Company, which quickly acquired the Sopwith aircraft design patents, as well as taking on support of pre-existing Sopwith aircraft. HD Hawker Engineering later became Hawker Aircraft Company and produced the Hawker Hind, Hart and, of course, the Hawker Hurricane. They later went on to design and produce other famous aircraft, including the Hunter and the Harrier. The story of takeovers and mergers was a distinct trait that occurred to British aircraft manufacturers. The new or reorganised companies did on occasion include the name of the former company in the new name to provide a moment of history and, in some cases, pride. Few Sopwith aircraft remain airworthy. Those that do are invariably replicas. 
with one or two originals still flying or in muse museums and collections. Where Sopwith had subcontracted companies during the war and after to assist with manufacturing, they actually helped some companies to become their own manufacturing concerns. Two examples are Saunders, who were bought by A.V. Rowe and became Saunders Rowe, also known as Sarrow, and Blackburn Aircraft. Saunders helped build the Batboat and became famous in their own right for building flying boats and helicopters. Blackburn Aircraft <coughs> made most of the Sopwith Cuckoo, Britain's first purpose-built land plane able to launch a torpedo. They then went on to create such revolutionary aircraft as the Blackburn Buccaneer. There are now few individual aircraft-related manufacturers in Britain making aircraft or aircraft parts and power plants compared to the start of the 20th century. Most of the old companies eventually merged and became British Aerospace or went into liquidation and disappeared altogether. It is a proud history for those who like it and wish it was not so rare or difficult to celebrate it. Few of Sopwith's buildings still exist. At Brooklyn's there is a fabulous museum using some of the original buildings and hangars and sheds used by the companies that were based there, including Sopwith. The majority of the place itself is now an industrial park with little remaining of the original airfield and racing circuit. In Kingston and Cranberry Park Road, the buildings are listed. They are now offices and houses. There was a time, however, when Kingston University's Aeronautical Engineering Department used them, so they still kept a connection. The imposing building on Ham Road, with its grand facade, and once dominated the area, and one time home to Leyland Vehicles and Hawker Aircraft, later British Aerospace, was unfortunately demolished after BAE, as they became, moved out in the 1990s. There was a strong campaign to have it listed, but that unfortunately failed. Shepperton Film Studios were even muted to have an interest in, in its location as it was ideal, covering a vast area on the banks of the River Thames. It is now a housing estate.